Hey, welcome folks. This is Eric and I'm your president for the Washington County Public Affairs Forum. I'd like to uh, make a couple brief announcements. First and foremost, we have a board meeting following uh, our meeting here. And if you're interested about the leadership of the forum, please uh, stay a little bit late. Uh, our board meetings are not very boring. Sometimes they're actually kind of exciting. And uh, um, we're going to be setting the table for our annual meeting, which will be at the beginning of next month. And I'll set the forum structure and leadership and identify our leaders for uh, next forum season. Um, on a little bit of a, a side note, I'd like to uh, recognize Bill Kroger, who's been a, a forum uh, uh, member who's done a lot of great things in the community. He's also writing a book called uh, Fallon's Orphans. And I'm suggesting that our program committee brings him in, like other offers that we've entertained here, in order to present about this book. And uh, what I'd like to do now is kind of set the expectations for the balance of the meeting. Of the candidates, we have two that have arrived. and. Uh, the order which they will appear in is Pavel Gombrin and then Joe Ray Perkins. Because of a promise and a candidate that may be late, what we're going to do is change the time allotments to 10 minutes each. And then for you as the forum members that are uh, by membership privilege able to ask questions, I ask that you keep your questions to 30 seconds or less. And for the candidates, I ask that you keep your responses to about a minute or less. And we, I'd like to uh, just publicly acknowledge another forum volunteer, and that's Marilyn McWilliams. Would you wave? Marilyn uh, is a water, Twalton Valley Water District Commissioner and uh, does a fabulous job with so many different things and she's volunteered today to be our timer. And uh, so when you see the cards come up, candidates please mind Marilyn because she is uh, the gatekeeper of time and keeps this meeting moving along. So what I'd like to do is uh, first invite Pavel, Pavel Goberman, to come up and give us uh, 10 minutes and tell us about your candidacy. Thank you. Uh, my name is Pavel Goberman. Uh, I see many of you knew six years ago, past six years ago, since I was in uh, sp spoke before uh, this uh, Washington County Public Affair Forum. Uh, I originally from former USSR, came here uh, for, for political reasons uh, 34 years ago. I live in, uh, in Oregon for 32 years. Thank you for inviting me and uh, giving me opportunity to talk. Uh, my parents uh, died war during World War II. I grew up in orphanage in uh, Moscow, worked as machinist, started work uh, at age uh, 15. Then worked as machinist, mechanic, truck driver, logger, and after university worked as successful business manager. He had a, did good profit for company, for government, he, he had a word for this. Uh, here worked for TriMet, uh, but 16 years ago, I was illegally terminated. I still could, don't know why I was uh, fired. Bolly Bureau of Labor and Industry, the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, refused to investigate my complaint. United States District Court judge dismissed a remit report against, uh, against me as fraud. He didn't allow use in court, but I, I was pro se, didn't know law. He, didn't say it to jury, but judge did judicial misconduct, didn't order in my favor. Till today, uh, TriMet owe me at least $950,000 from um, plus for damage. Uh, my many complaint uh, to Senator Biden, to elected Senator Merkley and uh, Avakian were ignored. Therefore, I decided to run against them. Uh, all of this, uh, politician gave also office. He, when they violated it, a violation, it is uh, perjury, it crime, it felony. I don't know how they ex could do it. Uh, I could not do it. If I gave oath, I have to obey law. But they no ignorance because no any punishment. I, fail, I filed a complaint with the Secretary of State against uh, Merkley in a vacant to disqualify them to run for office, but uh, Secretary of State ignored it. 
my company. I'm in health fitness business, try to help most people in possible prevention, many illnesses, diseases. I'm in good uh, health. I'm, uh, I do six, seven pull-ups. During swimming, I use butterfly strokes. I'm honest, incorruptible, do not accept any money from nobody. I will not sell this country. I have a question. Who knows what is fascism is? I will explain. Fascist, fascism, it is when a country rule and uh, regulate by special persons, special uh, one person or special group. In the United States, it's a is dominated Republican and re Democratic Party. And both of them are regulated by uh, president. But, regul uh, but general, uh, this country, president, uh, Democratic, Republican Party, in masses, uh, rule it and uh, control it, dominated, brainwashed by the media. I name media create uh, political prostitution, nation for sale. There no need money in election. We have all public broadcast service. It got many million dollars taxpayers money. It have to be informed obligation to pay back to society. Inform, educate uh, Oregonian about candidate running for US Senate. But they intentionally refuse to do it, intentionally. I many times spoke, was, was going to speak, asked permission. They did not allow me to talk to board of directors. And I demand to stop funding us because pu public broadcast service, it's it good, nation need public broadcast, but honest. But the only public broadcast is staged for big company, corporation, for Wall Street, or from big media. You see, all brainwashing. I, I name it Oregon Public Broadcast Public Enemy, uh, Cancer of Our Society. They don't like me, sure. You do everything to block my election, everything. This conspiracy, big TV, TV 2, two Channel 6, Channel 8. They interviewed a uh, Republican, but do not interview me. And what more important, media ignored people. They themselves made election before primary. They elected, appointed uh, Merkley for re-election in November. They did before primary. It was a spit in face of people. And how people have accepted. All talking about Republican candidates who will run against Merkley in November, but no one worried about me. They afraid I will be elected. <laughs> With this, it's so low. I could shortly as as United if I will be elected, I promise to create a few million jobs, balance budget, improve heavy traffic. I have plan to improve heavy traffic, not only in metro, in all United States and uh, in in the cities, because uh, Columbia River crossing, they spend so much million, uh, looks like 17 million dollars. When they spend about a couple thousand dollars, I spoke before uh, Metro Council when Brandon was uh, president. And I say, ask him, give me opportunity in a few days, I will improve heavy traffic. No, ignore it. Now they spend many millions of dollars. He wanted more do, uh, taxpayers' money, about four mi billion from invest again, about two mi billion from government. Nation is bankrupt, no money. It don't need a new bridge. I, I said I have plan to create to improve uh, traffic. It saved uh, country many billions dollars. Or oh, shortly, um, I have also plan. Uh, English must be official language. It. Uh, Nation without own language, it's not nation. It, uh, uh, so, so uh, I, I have logic, uh, it, uh, also prohibit, uh, my plan is prohibit loco locomotive to use a horn from 11 p.m. to uh, 6 a.m. Uh, more important, my uh, agenda is to protect this nation for uh, weapons of mass destruction. 
uh, this nation will wake up when some nation, uh, weapons of mass destruction will drop on this country, not only from, uh, not only from Iran, but from any uh, ship close to the United States border. Then we'll say, it, oh, uh, we didn't prevent it. Okay. Uh, therefore, the primary election, it is illegal and con unconstitutional. How I am former immigrant with imperfect illness must pass for it. But when don't allow other people to vote, it's uh, simple. It violations their civil rights, uh, human rights. It's, uh, uh, children knows that uh, word freedom of speech and um, uh, Money too different, but United States Supreme Court could not get it. A unlimited uh, don uh, donation contribution. It's nation for sale. He use keep quiet. It's not interest leave to keep quiet. You see, therefore, I fight for this country. Uh, what more about illegal immigra immigration? Why? Uh, President Obama, Sen Obama Senator Ma uh, Merkel, and uh, Biden didn't open. A door, own door, own homes, but own uh, open national door. You see, it it not proper way. I, immigrant came, therefore, don't blame only illegal immigrant. Blame government, United States government for illegal immigration, uh, crime about crime. It have to uh, hard punishment for crime. Uh, prisoners must be profitable. Have to work, and but not in, in entertainment. Some. Some people uh, say, it, uh, oh, person killed a person, he is mentally ill. No excuse. Uh, they have to be punished. Uh, hard work is best treatment. Therefore, uh, it all about uh, the car insurance. If person uh, have no accident, 50% uh, must pay back. If a person don't drive more than 100 miles per month, 75% have to be back. Okay, thank you. If some very good question, welcome to ask. Wonderful. How about a hand for Pavel? Thank you. Please have a seat. Kill the mics for one second. Are we up? Folks, uh, uh, Mr. Pavel Goberman uh, ranks far in excess of anyone else in our YouTube hits. He has one video from 2008 of the Washington County Public Affairs Forum with 2,500 views. So I want to thank you for uh, not only returning. Yes, you can give me a hand for that. <laughs> and uh, what I'd like to do is just buy a moment or two for uh, Joe Ray to make her way up here. I met Joe Ray at Emerging Leaders for Oregon uh, uh, about a year ago, and she's a remarkable person with uh, uh, a wonderful intellect and looking forward to hearing her present. So. Um, uh, without any further ado, would you please give Joe Ray Perkins a round of applause? Thanks for being here. You bet. Well, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Joe Ray Perkins, and I am the most conservative candidate running on the Republican ticket to displace the most liberal senator in Washington, D.C. Would I like to know how many Republicans are in the room? How many Democrats are in the room? And how many, who knows, non-affiliated voters? Okay, thank you. The, re the reason I ask that, it's not because I'm going to change my views or anything like that. It, it helps me get a good understanding for, for the audience. I am running on the Republican ticket, and I know that probably close to 50% of you can't vote for me until the general primary, until the general election in November. Um, Folks, it's not so much about Republican versus Democrat versus non-affiliated voters. So I'm going to ask you another question. How many of you are American citizens? Everybody. You're all American citizens. Okay. So that's good. <laughs> that's a good start. The reason I ask is it's not, it's not this party versus that party. It's about saving our republic. We live in a republic not a democracy. This is a constitutional republic. And in a republic, that means that the minority gets a, gets, gets a say as well as what's going on. That's why we have two-thirds votes. That's why our founders set it up the way that they set it up. So, and I would think that all of you would agree with me 
that our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren should all have the same opportunities to define their success the way that you are able to define your own success. Would you agree with me on that? I, I don't think anybody has any disagreement. In my almost 40 years of voting, I'm, I'll be 58 uh, Friday. I'll be 58 years old. And uh, yes, I made it that long. It's an amazing thing. Um, I cannot remember a time when we've had so many major issues facing our country simultaneously. We have a debt right now. Uh, the last I looked, it was $17.5 trillion, pushing the 17.6 mark very rapidly. That is unsustainable. Now, we talk about this, these big numbers, and most of us can't even put that, can't even comprehend what a trillion dollars means. So I'm going to put that into perspective, and I'm going to pick on Lois, because I, I know Lois. Lois, I'm going to give you a million dollars today to spend, and tomorrow, and the next day, and the next day, until you spend one trillion dollars. So how long, Lois, is it going to take you to spend a trillion dollars at a million dollars every day? Long, yes, way longer. Here's the answer, 2,739 years. At a million dollars a day is how long it would take to spend one trillion dollars. Citizens, our federal government is spending almost one trillion dollars more per year than what they're bringing in. That's why we have so much debt. The question is, what are they spending it on? Let me give you an example. How about a million dollar grant to study romance novels? I think that's a little bit outrageous. The federal government actually gave somebody a million dollars to study romance novels. I have looked in our Constitution. It's not in there. It doesn't say the federal government should be giving money to anybody to research anything. In fact, the closest it comes is to support the arts I suppose you could slip it under there, and for patents. That's as close as you could possibly come. Well, you can't patent a romance novel and to protect copyrights. Um, the job of the federal government is listed. There are 18 specific items that are listed in there. One of those, of course, is to protect our borders, is to protect us from enemies, foreign and domestic. That is one of the jobs of the federal government. Another one is to is to figure out our weights and measures and coin our money. It doesn't say it should be handed off to a non-governmental agency, which is what the Federal Reserve Board is. How many of you know that the Federal Reserve Board is not a federal government agency? How many of you thought the Federal Reserve Board was part of the federal government? So nobody. One person. Okay, thank you, Marilyn. So the Federal Reserve Board is a bank cartel. It is made up of bankers. So when we had this last financial debacle in 2008, 2009, and all these banks failing, if you will take a look at the banks that were failing, you will notice that not one of them were the large banks. In fact, the large banks were buying up the small banks. And the large banks that were having trouble were allowed to stay on. So Chase, the Bank of New York, U.S. Bank, they were all far, part of the Federal Reserve Board. There's 12 governors of the Federal Reserve Board. Why is this important? Because the Federal Reserve Board is responsible for every recession this country has had since 1913. That's 100 plus, just, you know, 101 years. That's why it's important. So they are, they are manipulating the money. They are causing this high inflation. When I got my license in 1972, I paid 32 cents for a gallon of gas. I paid $4.40 when I filled up my tank two days ago. That's inflation. Where does that inflation go? It comes out of your pocketbook. Let's talk about minimum wage. One of the big things that's out there is wage, you know, increasing the minimum wage. My first job outside of babysitting, I made a buck 65 an hour. So that's what I got paid in 1972. Um, today, the federal uh, minimum wage is $7.70. In Oregon, it's $9.10, I think it is. But who's paying for that? Just a few years ago, a cup of coffee cost 50 cents. I don't know what it is here, but most restaurants it's $2.50. So every time the minimum wage is increased, the businesses pass that on to you. And it's not just about paying somebody a higher wage. That employer also now has to pay a higher amount of money in taxes to the federal government. How many business owners are in here that have had to write? So you guys know what I'm talking about, correct? So the Social Security tax goes up. The federal income tax goes up. 
the FICA tax, the Medic which is your Medicare tax that all automatically increases because it is based upon the amount of, of money that the employee earns. So it sounds good on paper that we should increase the minimum wage. What happened to negotiation a wage? Negotiating a wage, that's part of what the free market is. We've all been had interviews where we said, well, yeah, I'd be more than happy to go to work for you, but no, I'm not happy to go to work for you for this wage, but I'll go to work for you for this wage. Which takes me to the next part, which is the Affordable Care Act. Health insurance, as we all will remember, used to be a fringe benefit that employers used to entice people to come to work for them or to keep good employees. It was not the norm. But slowly over time, as with many things, it did become the norm and it became the expectation. But there are times when you were willing to work for a company because you, you really liked that company and you're willing to go to work for them and not have that health insurance. In fact, because of health insurance, your medical costs have increased. I'll give you a great example. My husband um, has been dealing with a small medical issue and the doctor said, well, no, an MRI isn't going to show anything. Well, after the doctor saying, well, it was an infection and two rounds of, of antibiotics. My husband did not, re, did not improve, so he decided to get an MRI. Well, if we had gone through an insurance company, that MRI would have cost upward of $3,000. Well, there's a company in Lebanon, $485 for the MRI, plus the reading, so that MRI cost us um, just under $700. What's the difference? One, we paid for it out of pocket. The other went through the insurance companies. So insurance companies have actually driven up the cost of health insurance. A lot of people don't realize that. Um, I am not for the Affordable Care Act. I believe that it verges on communism. When the federal government mandates that you must buy a private business product, and if you don't, you're going to have to pay a tax penalty, that is communism. When the federal government tells a private industry you must provide for your employees insurance if they work more than 30 hours a week. That, folks, is communism. So what has happened to all those people? I talked to employees that work at, at, uh, at O'Reilly's Auto Parts. They are now working a maximum of 27 hours a week. That's it. They, all of their hours were cut back. Why? Because the employers are going, we can't afford this insurance. Because the mandates, the costs have gone up. These are just some of the examples. My background is in financial planning and investments and helping people figure out how to get out of debt. Our country is, and I hate to say this, but it's true, our country is mathematically bankrupt. It is time that we get somebody in Washington, D.C. who is not going to be part of the political machine, and I'm not. I've not been bought by big money, and my endorsements are coming from Main Street Americans just like me. I've been married to my high school sweetheart for 36 years. 36 years, we've got a 34-year-old son and our daughter is almost 33 and 10 grandchildren. Folks, I'm a Main Street American who understands. My name is Joe Ray Perkins. You have your ballots for the Republicans that haven't filled them out yet. There's a little circle next to my name that says Perkins for U.S. Senate. Thank you very much. Well, folks, we're going to open this up for questions. And uh, just if you're looking up here, we're doing something really presidential. We're mimicking the presidential microphone stereo pair. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you know what? Um, we've gotten some feedback is that uh, Joseph Tyner uh, and myself show up a little early to make sure that the forum sounds good. We have a people with a spectrum of different hearing abilities. Some people hear a little too well, and some people don't hear well enough at all. And uh, so this room sounds really good. It's lively. And I want to thank you for being here. But what I'd like to do is invite some folks to come, to come up and uh, ask some questions. And if you've got a question, would you please ask it in 30 seconds or less? And candidates, would you please respond in one minute or less? So who's got the first question? Lois? Oh, and I'd like to introduce uh, Lois O'Brien, who uh, rejoined the forum again today. So uh, thank you for joining. And Lois and everyone else, as you're making your way up here, if you could direct your question to one or both of the candidates as you ask your question. Well, this could be to both of you. Um, well, the gentleman, I, I want to know how much uh, 
history from America's founding have you studied, and is it an ongoing thing? And uh, I know uh, Joe has probably uh, done that, but also for the people here, uh, there were two men that wrote a book about America's from uh, Columbus on, and in this, they went to the Harvard, uh, what do they call this, underground? Catacombs. <laughs> they have thousands and thousands of original writings, and they wrote this book about America's founding. And I wonder if you've read, so it's all accurate, and that's the truth, and that's what's missing in schools today, but I was wondering if you've read anything uh, to that knowledge. Uh, first, I uh, first, I would like to say, you, uh, I'm myself author of a book, uh, fitness, health fitness, named Get Energized. But I didn't read book, or this, what you name it, but I read a lot of read about Constitution United States. Or this is the best book. It violated uh, criminal contempt, it uh, raped by politician. Or this is more important than I read some fiction a book. Do you have any question more? <laughs> oh. Okay, also I want to say, uh, you already said uh, your age, uh, my age, my name, uh, my age about 76 and a half. I'm in good health because I don't want to give my uh, health, uh, body in health of doctors. Also about, uh, she said about good, about uh, health care. But I want to say, with this Oregon, uh, Obamacare will, dra will dra uh, dra drive with this uh, insurance up, up. You will see. They only for started, but then give them power, they will increase premium health insurance. Okay, thank you. Jerry, did you want to respond yeah. to the so, question? Yeah, this will just be real quick. Um, yeah, I've read several books on, on, of course, the history of our country and what our founders had in mind. And one of the things that I like to point out is when our founders were coming up with the, the terms of office, they came up with something very interesting, two years for the House, six years for the Senate, and four years for the President. In their minds, that was a term limit. They, they never imagined somebody being in Washington, well, of course, at that time, pre-Washington, D.C., but they couldn't imagine somebody being there forever and ever and ever, 10, 20, 30, 40 years. That was just outside of the realm of thinking. I have actually put term limits on myself. I signed the, the term limit pledge, and I, would, I actually will refuse to serve more than a total of two terms in the U.S. Senate, which is 12 years. Folks, that is more than enough time in Washington, D.C. So thank you for the question, Lois. My name is Bill Kroger. I'm a forum member. Thank you both for coming in today. I appreciate it. Uh, if, you, if you get elected to the Senate, you're moving into the national and international arena. So I was just curious on what your thoughts are about the situation with Russia and Putin and Ukraine. As you see, when United States in, invited in some scene, all some started create problem. What media started a couple, many months ago, problem in Ukraine, and many people died them. I myself, born in Crimea. I know everybody, in my, in, I came here in 1980, and everybody spoke in Ukraine, spoke Russian. And now, take a look, president of Ukraine speak Russian. What shame, Ra Ukraine English, oh, Ukraine language, very beautiful English. Yeah, I encourage them have to be, speak own language, uh, but no, most of them speak Russian. Um, uh, therefore, I say you a good question about, um, <laughs> uh, but I blame United States for uh, started problems there. I'm hoping that I, that I understood the question as I was listening to, to Pavel. Um, we have a president who has said that he's leading from behind. We know that, according to reports, that he removed some military armament just prior to President uh, Putin uh, positioning his troops um, along the, the Crimean border at the Black Sea. 
And there's some major issues there because it was set up so that uh, Ukraine gets their energy through Russia, and that was a concern that was raised many, many years ago. That, that if this were left and people did not come, other countries did not come to their aid, that they were going to be put in a position to where uh, the Russian government could go back in and take them over. Uh, from Putin's standpoint, I can understand where he's coming from. From the, uh, the people of, of Ukraine, they have the right to their own sovereignty. Having said that, I would like to see more European nations coming to their aid first. They are right there. They are closest to that. I am concerned if we get in there militarily, what is that going to do to our troops? I don't think that they're ready for that at this point. Thank you. Harry Budding, Forum member. You know, I just heard from Ukraine that yesterday. We have a friend there, and uh, <clears throat> his family's Russian. He does not uh, have any interest in being part of Putin's Russia. Period. My question, I'm sorry, I took advantage of the time here. I'm interested in what you had to say about the national debt. And just going back, uh, there was a pup report some time back, in the past few months, that if you abolish the entire federal government establishment, including the Department of Defense, everything the federal government does, and I'm sorry, uh, <coughs> the you still have a deficit of two or three hundred million dollars a year because of Medicare and Social Security. Both trust funds are, are going to go bankrupt presently. Which <clears throat> the Democrats say tax the rich, Merkley. The Republicans say don't tax anybody, don't raise taxes. What's, what's your solution to this? Thank you for the for the question on on the debt. Yeah, the so the future unfunded liabilities is over 126 trillion dollars, which is to pay for Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, and the federal employees retirement system. Uh, clearly, our current system is not working. The first thing that we can do, and shutting, of course, we can't just get away the entire federal government. And but there are many, many agencies that we need to get rid of that are not constitutional that will start saving money. I actually, and it's in my brochure, I am an advocate of doing away with the federal income tax. Let's do a constitutional amendment. Let's put in a sales tax with a limit specified in that constitutional amendment. For example, no more than 10%, and I use 10% because it's easy math to do in our, in our heads, and if I said 20, it would freak everybody out. But if we got rid of everything, it would probably save us money if we didn't have Social Security tax. What that does is that takes care of the underground economy as well. And so people who, who work under the table, they're going to be paying a sales tax when they buy something, but your food and your medical would not be taxed. And so I think that's something worth looking at to, to figure out what to do with this, this, with this problem. Thank you. Uh, all many years I stand up, uh, stand up f f for against debt. Many years, uh, it uh, it it crime. It is uh, it is uh, national debt. It is terror against our country in, inside United States. N no, looks like nobody from you have some debt. Why nation has debt? Why many millions dollars spent to other country when people say this America? And now. 17 point looks like six trillion dollars debt again spending 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 why didn't buy an election uh, Merkley also buy an election gave many grants in in at Oregon they buy an election I first priority control spending thank you Chris Leslie, foreign member, what uh, department or action would you take to uh, decrease the size of government? I see. Thank you. <laughs> Good question. First, I would like to take a judicial department, a judicial, because many judges violate Constitution in the United States. They gave us of office. I filed a complaint with the United States District Court uh, against Secretary of State uh, Brown, against, against Merkley. I filed a lawsuit for violation of Constitution for perjury. The United States Judge Haggerty dismissed all my complaints, said I harassed government employee. You see? 
<laughs> in former USSR, if political hungry, skinny political prisons went on hunger strike, uh, strike KGB said uh, prison went to, on diet. He said I harassed government to play also about constitution. Uh, when it's not a check and balance, when the president, United States Senate are appointing judges, United States attorney, it's not separation of power, it's not check and balance, it's rape constitution, United States. Thank you. There are so many to close. First, I would start with what the Constitution says the, the role of the federal government is, but I'm going to pick on one of my favorites. Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17 of the U.S. Constitution is very specific what land the federal government can own. In a nutshell, it says 10 square miles, Washington, D.C., plus land for military use and other needful buildings. The federal government owns 53 percent of Oregon. 70 percent of Josephine County is owned by the federal government. What's that done is that is cut jobs. If we have more jobs, guess what? We have more tax revenue if people have more money to spend because they're working. That will help work down that deficit. So once that land goes back to the states where it belongs in their state ownership, we can easily close down the U.S. Forestry Department, uh, the Interior Lands, the BLM. Those are just to start with. I also would advocate to close the U.S. Department of Education. Education needs to go back to the local level and be controlled locally where parents and grandparents can have input into the education the children are receiving. Thank you for the question. Good afternoon, uh, Lee Coleman, uh, forum member. What, in your considered opinion, uh, is the function of the preamble to the Constitution of the United States? Oh, that's a great question, because now I'm sitting here thinking, great, where's my constitution? It's sitting in my car in my folder. Is that the, uh, you're gonna, I'm sorry, because I have not memorized the preamble to the constitution. I'm th only one that I'm thinking of is, is the Declaration of Independence, so. My, and my husband has it memorized, so if we can bear with me for the one minute so I can hear what it is that I can tell you. Well, since you asked, uh, it is, uh, in my opinion, it is the uh, mission statement for the government. No, no, uh, what, what's the preamble say? Do you know what the preamble <clears throat> says? We the people uh, ordain this constitution uh, to establish a government to provide justice, uh, provide for the oh, welfare of the common, common welfare, okay. provide for domestic tranquility to ensure yes. justice, uh, is that a statement directed to each of the three branches of government? Yes, I, w I would say it is. My husband, my husband actually has that memorized. I've memorized the Gettysburg Address just about all the way, all the way through. So my, my apologies. Um, but yes, that, that does set up where this, the direction of this country, it is a mission statement of, of our country that we do need to ensure domestic tranquility, which goes back to protecting us from our, from our enemies. I think that's very important in it, and it does go to all three branches of the government. I also a uh, little bit confused uh, about your question, preamble. Uh, Constitution was uh, adopted uh, uh, October, looks like 1787, uh, Constitution, then many amendments. And now, uh, Yes, three branches of government, as I said before, uh, they violated it. Not it uh, against constitution to president appointed judges, uh, judges attorney. They started puppet of this uh, government. You see what it's it uh, not acceptable. Uh, uh, United States judges attorney in special counsel must be elected. Because I said I filed many complaints against judges in United States Senator who will investigate their crime, crimes, because all depends on government. Also, uh, previous uh, question was what branch of government? I say it a judicial, also Federal Communication Commission. I will shut up uh, many uh, TV station for for bribery. Thank you. Hi, Anthony Mills, member of the uh, forum. Uh, this is for Mr. Goberman. I was uh, intrigued by your support of Putin. That's very interesting. But my question is, you seem to flip-flop between being a Republican and a Democrat. 
do you think that you're uh, philosophically consistent or do you just do that for political gain? I expect that maybe somebody will ask this question. F first, uh, not for Putin. Putin, former KGB, but he did a good job in uh, uh, combining with this country. So many people died when there was revolution uh, in 1991. So, but he organized this, this country. You see, I against uh, Putin for an invasion invited uh, in Ukraine. I say that people must make uh, election, you see, not government, not Putin. Therefore, I stand for election in Ukraine, in Crimea, in Ukraine. People, also, why the United States must go to there? Uh, they have U European Union, you see. Europe must make decision, but not the United States. I again, so many of our people dying, they dying now, and not, no one pay attention. About the uh, second uh, question about the Republican uh, Democratic Party, <laughs> good question. It is, again, media created this two party. Media, media created for own, it, I say it again, primary illegal, unconstitutional. Eric Squires, Forum member. I've got a question for each of you, and it's a separate question. Jerry Perkins, I understand you uh, have a Series 6 and 63 securities license, and if you were to take office, I'd like to know how that would serve you um, in uh, replacing Jeff Merkley, who sits on the Senate Banking and Finance Committee. Mr. Government, my question for you is as follows. Uh, also relating to Senator Jeff Merkley, on repeated occasions, you have referred to him as a criminal, and I'm wondering if you could tell me why. So, Joe Ray. Okay, thank you. Um, I obtained the Series 6 and 63 licenses in 1987, I think it was. Um, and I sub sub subsequently ended up with four additional investment licenses. December of 2012, all of my licenses went away, every single one of them, because I knew that I was going to be running for this seat. So I had the choice to, to stop going to college. I had gone back to OSU to complete my undergrad studies because I took a 30 plus year hiatus while I raised my family. Um, and I knew that the choice was to, to stop my path, my journey for the seat and go back to work or give up my licenses. So I actually gave them all up. So to the question, how would that do? As a, as a financial advisor, we, take a, uh, we have to abide by what is called the fiduciary responsibility rule. So when I invested money for my clients, it was their money, not my money. Folks, the money that the federal government takes from you in the form of taxation is not their money. It is your money, and it needs to be treated prudently, just like I had to do as a financial advisor, and that is what I still hold to. Okay, good question. Um, when I was illegally terminated in 1998 by TriMet, I many times wrote letter. First, the uh, United States District Court judge uh, Penner dismissed TriMet report against me as fraud. But he did judicial uh, 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 misconduct. He didn't give order in my favor because Oregon Employment Department found my termination illegal. I many times uh, Bolly did not investigate. Therefore, I applied for Equal Employment Opportunity Commission to investigate why it was terminated. They refused it. I many times contacted uh, the Senator Biden, ignored my complaint. Also, I, in 2008, I ran against uh, Merkley uh, because of my Biden uh, you, uh, government ignored my complaint. I ran against uh, Merkley. When he re-elected, uh, elected, I was not elected, because, but I got uh, many votes. I sent him a letter, request to Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, must investigate, but Equal Employment uh, Chair uh, Berrien refused to investigate my complaint. Therefore, I sent it to Senator Merkley, uh, but he refused. It is federal crime. It is uh, perjury. Uh, Lee Coleman, uh, forum member again. Uh, should the United States recognize the Chechnya as an independent uh, autonomous republic? I think it, uh, 
uh, United States intervention in any country, take care about own uh, nation first. So many people died, they dying for uh, our country. So many people for nothing. They have Europe, you have European uh, Union, and they must uh, make decision or uh, to resolve any conflict. Therefore, save our people in the uh, in nation, uh, to spend so much money on them. I say, it, uh, first take care about our own nation. I, I find that a, a rather interesting question. Um, if the Chechnya, Chech, I can even say it, Chech, Chechnya, did I say that right? People say that they are a sovereign nation and they have a sovereign government. Absolutely. What right do we have as, a, as our own sovereign nation to tell some other people that they don't have the right to their own sovereignty? I, I, that would make no sense to me whatsoever. They have the right to establish their own country. We've seen it time and time again where, where a group of people get together and say, you know what, we're going to form our own independent, sovereign nation with our own governments. And I would 100 percent support that. And I don't think the United States has the right to tell any other people group that they don't have the right to their own sovereignty. May I have a little bit of reply? 15 seconds. Okay. 15 uh, seconds. I know, I know some Chechen people. I, I was in university in Moscow. Very good people. Very good people. You see, it's not government business dictate what uh, them, them to do. One separation, same separation is all. Thank you. Since uh, about 1600, Russia has had over 600 wars. And the uh, Ukraine has been under Turkish, Polish, German, Russian control over all these times, years, uh, and I don't even think I'm getting all the different countries that have controlled those areas. How do you really decide which government is correct for Ukraine? The, Ukra the Ukrainian people, they're the ones that decide it, what they want for their own government. What right do we, again, as a nation, have to step into another country and tell them who their leader is going to be? If we just take a, a look at our short history here in the United States, how many wars have we had to define our own constitution and our own form of governments? Revolutionary War, the American Indian War, the Alamo, the Civil War. They have the right to decide their own future. It is not our job. And if people of Ukraine say we want our own governments, we want to define our own constitution, this is the rule of law that we want to live under, then I feel very strongly that every government in this entire world should stand behind that group. The exception would be, of course, if they're going in there to, to murder people, as what happened in Nazi Germany when Hitler came in to power. I mean, you know, clearly human rights is huge but they should have the right to their sovereignty. I was born in Ukraine, uh, live it after military in big city, Dnipropetrovsk, the center of Ukraine, a little southwest from Kiev. Uh, all, all speak Russian, all speak Russian. For, in the Ukraine language, very beautiful language, soft, beautiful language. He, when the United States in, 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 in another country invited, divided a dictated nation what to do, I think uh, they have to do themselves, do election what they want, uh, separation, some part of Ra Russia to U eastern part of uh, Ukraine to Russia. I think it's not uh, United States business to dictate them what to do. Thank you. John McWilliams, forum member, I'd like to bring it maybe a little closer to home. I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, an event uh, uh, at the legislature when there is um, a topic coming up and uh, really strongly is getting ready to be voted on. Uh, then all of a sudden somebody says, I object. And uh, so they have to take a vote. And then it took a, and it just got changed just recently uh, f from the filibuster that uh, you can't filibuster when um, a body has a certain number of votes to overrule it. And now, um, 
So my question is, uh, how do you look at the filibuster at this time, and, and would you like to see any changes? Thank you. You're, you're talking about the nuclear option, John. Uh, yes. Okay, that's referred to as a nuclear option. Interesting thing with the United States Senate, they get to set their own rules. So they were legitimate, maybe not ethically right, but legitimate in what they did. Now, the Senate is taking a gamble. This is, what, this is what they're banking on. This is what they're anticipating, in my opinion, is that they will not hold the majority. So if they do away with the filibuster, which they've done, and they do not hold the majority, what they are hoping is that the Republican Party will put the filibuster back in. That keeps them still in control of what is going on with the decisions because now they can filibuster presidential appointments. And that's what, what they're doing. They're, they're, they're taking a gamble. So for them, it's a win-win situation because while they're in charge, they get to easily approve. And if they lose control, they can filibuster and keep those people from being appointed. Uh, in the United States Senate and Congress, and Congress, uh, Senate and House, it must be rule and regulation. A special time, uh, some fil filibuster really ignores this uh, many hours. It is a useless conversation. It should be changed. Okay, also, um, I want to say you, my name was not in water uh, pamphlet. I filed for candidates for uh, water pamphlets. They didn't include why? Because I filed legally, I filed by paper. They requ requested uh, by electronically, but they have problem with electronic, I have second part. Therefore, I filed by legally paper, electronically with my illegal signature, but Secretary of State uh, Brown refused to print my name, and I filed lawsuit against Secretary of State Brown. For violation constitution, you know, violation of my freedom of speech. Eric Squire is for a member. I guess I'm going to take the last question. I'd like to ask each of you maybe two brief questions. First, if you could tell us why you chose the political party, just maybe the top reason why you belong to that party. And my tough question is whether or not you would use, if elected, your franking privileges in order to message a reduction of government. Do either of you know what franking privileges are? Pavel, do you know? No, I don't know franking. franking privileges are your ability to send mail from your office. Oh, yes, thank you. So um, please, your answers? For free. For free, okay. So first, why the Republican Party? When I first registered to vote when I was 18 years old, I registered as a Democrat. My parents were Democrats. And, but I remember saying to my boyfriend, now husband, I feel more like a Republican, which was interesting because we really didn't discuss politics in my, in my home. And in 1987, I formally changed to a Republican. Why? The platform of the Republican Party and for what the Republican Party has stood for, the party of civil rights, the party that fought against slavery, the party that brought suffrage to women, the party who first started with cleaning up and fighting for our environment, the party who believes in God, the party who believes in a smaller government, the party who kept God in their platform statement unlike the Democrat Party did at the DNC in 2012. I stand as a Republican because this is a republic. Franking if it is long as it is strictly business of the Senate, absolutely you need to mail out to your constituents. But to be putting things out there if you're a candidate, no, it needs to not have anything related to being a candidate. It should be strictly on what you have done. Uh, really, I don't care. Republican or Democratic Party, I care about this uh, country, about America. We have constitution, it's named We the People. And I stand up for We the People. It media created two parties, Republican and them, again, for own huge monetary benefits. Therefore, I don't care. I run as Democrat because Merkel is Democrat. But party, platform of both parties are good. 
they stand up for this constitution, but people elected candidate, uh, politician violated these uh, uh, rules in, in the platform of this party. Also, this, I, we have one constitution, and we have to support this constitution, not parties. And I ask it, Republican or Democrat, who think, uh, read my statement, maybe well, not statement, but on, uh, in, no, on website, if wanted, write it, my, my name. He also, I wanted to ignore media, boycott media. Folks, we're going to entertain a 60-second closing statement from each candidate, and we'll be done. Joe Ray, would you like to lead us off? Thank you very much. Thank you, Eric. Well, thank you all for the questions. They were very good questions. I appreciate the fact they were not Nerf ball questions or softball questions. They were excellent hardball questions. So that means a lot to me as a candidate. There's been some things, as I mentioned, that has happened in this country, but more importantly, what is going on with our Congress, with the House and the Senate? Passing bills that we have not read is an absolute outrage. I make a promise, and it's in my brochure and it's in writing. My staff and I will read every bill before I vote on it. If it is impossible, it will be an automatic no vote. Every vote must pass my three-way test. Number one, is it congruent with the Constitution and the Bill of Rights and the amendments as originally intended? Number two, is it free of pork barrel spending and unrelated projects? And number three, is it socially and fiscally conservative? It is time that we get back to what states' rights are and, and, and uh, make sure that our Tenth Amendment is being adhered to. It is time that we stop being politically correct and start being honest with the American public. My name is Joe Ray Perkins. I ask for your prayers, your support, and your vote. And if you didn't get a brochure, there's brochures in the back and donation envelopes. Thank you. Thank you. I, I'm running for your Senate again for this constitution. Uh, stop violation of this constitution and put many who were late in prison where they belong to. Uh, also, I run uh, for office uh, because I don't see anybody better than me could help create million jobs. I have plan to create million jobs, balance budget. You see, and more important, national security. Oh, this is more important for me. Also, I have plan uh, uh, to help senior citizens. We have to a little bit change. Some say change constitution about money. No, don't change money. Uh, have to prohibit uh, uh, the money in election. Prohibit. We have. We need public broadcast service uh, represent really, but have to be real public broadcast. It have inform. We pay for this public. It have to pay. It must pay back to society. Organize forum or debate. Candidate running for your Senate position. Thank you. Folks, I hate to declare uh, a winner, but it'd have to be Joe Ray Perkins for that shirt because I feel totally staged. <laughs> <laughs> she matched the uh, the set decorations. Uh, so anyway, uh, next week we've got uh, another program with uh, Beaverton City Councilors, John Samosa and Mark Sansuzzi appearing. We may have another program that's yet to be announced. After that, we have on the schedule uh, Senator Elizabeth Steiner Hayward uh, doing a uh, report on the uh, legislative session. And then I want to most importantly remind you that we will not be meeting May 26, which is Memorial Day. Final program of the season is our annual meeting. Please hear, be here for June 2nd, where your vote will count. Folks, thanks for being here. Have a great day. And hit, hang around for our board meeting. Bye-bye.